A great circle is a line across the Earth with a constantly changing track direction. But by how much does it change? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the fourth class in the GNAV series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the constantly changing track of great circles and then also how to switch between a great circle and a run line. So we established in the previous class that a great circle is the shortest possible distance between two points, but the direction is constantly changing. If we look at a top-down diagram right at the North Pole, you can see that if we move from this meridian here, the angle is quite small, to this meridian here, the angle is clearly larger. So if we take point A and point B on this map, and we think of the angle at point A, we can find out the difference in angle at point B using some simple geometry. So if we take a line parallel to point A and pop it at point B, we can see that this angle in here, let's call it angle um, X, is equal to this angle in here, X. So we basically have to find the difference that is added on in this angle. And how do we do that? Well, we just create some more lines to help us. So if we come in here and we take a parallel line going up, we can see that this angle in here, let's call that Y degrees, using simple Z angle rules, we can see that this angle in here would also be equal to y. And what is the difference between this point and this point? Or this line and this line? We're on different lines of longitude. So it's gonna be the change in longitude plus our original angle is gonna give us our new great circle direction. And that's true at all points along here. So you can see even at this midway point I've created, this angle in here is gonna be x, and then this small angle in here, let's call it Z, and the reflective Z angles gives you the change in longitude plus the original angle. So as lines of longitude are curved, they go from being perfectly parallel at the equator all the way up to a single point at the poles. This means that the convergency of the lines of longitude must depend on how close we are to either of these points. So there's zero convergency at the equator and there'd be full convergency up at the poles. Basically, it must depend on the latitude that we are at. So if we think about the equator as being zero degrees and the poles as being 90 degrees, we're looking for some sort of function that gives us zero at zero and the full convergency at 90. So we have a function for that, and that is the sine function. So we can come up for a theory uh, and an equation for how much lines converge based on this uh, sine wave. So if we say sine of the latitude times by the change in longitude, then we should get the convergency. And let's just test that theory. So we know that we have zero convergency at the equator. So sine of zero times whatever the change in longitude is, doesn't matter, is going to be zero because sine zero is zero. So convergency equals zero. Parallel lines, makes sense. Then we'll go all the way up to sine of 90 times by the change in longitude. Sine of 90 is one. And that's what we saw in the previous example of that top-down view at the North Pole. We know that the convergency of those lines is the change in latitude between them. So there you go, we've got a theory and an equation for convergency. Let's take a look at a wee example of how we would use that. So here we go, the great circle bearing of B from position A is 0, 4, 0 degrees true. What is the new great circle bearing at B? So first things first, we draw the effing picture. So we have point B, which is over here, north 30, 
east 60, and point A is further, sorry, point A is less east than point B. So point A is gonna be over here, and it's at the same uh, north 30. We have north up this direction, and north up this direction. And we have a great circle going between both of them. We have this angle in here as being 0, 4, 0 degrees, and we're looking for this angle in here. Cool, now we've got it all down on the page. Let's just use our equation and figure this out. So the convergency equals sine lat times the change in the longitude. So sine of the latitude is 30, sine 30 degrees, times by the change in longitude, east 10 to east 60, that's gonna be 50. Sine 30 is a half times 50, that means our convergency is gonna be 25 degrees. And from our picture, we can clearly see that B is a bigger angle than the angle at point A. So we have to add this onto our original angle. For an answer, the great circle bearing at B is going to be 40 plus 25, it's gonna be 65 degrees true. And if we were to take an average of our 040 and our 065, we'd find the average great circle track. So in this case, it would be 52 and a half for the average great circle track, if it asked us that. It's very simple, take one, take the other, and divide by two. And that average great circle track would be equivalent to the rum line between the two of them. So when I draw a diagram of both the great circle track from one point to the other and the rum line on it, we can see a few points. First, at the midpoint between these two longitudes, the rum line track and the great circle track are equal because the lines are parallel. Second, the rum line is always closer to the equator. In this case, we're looking at the South Pole, North is still up there, the equator is gonna be up here somewhere, and the rum line curves towards the equator always. And the third point is that the highest latitude, or the vertex of the Great Circle, is reached at the point where the Great Circle track is 90 or 270 degrees. We're going either purely east or purely west. And the very final point is you can see that there's clearly a difference between our starting rum line track, sorry, our starting Great Circle track and our starting rum line track. And the difference is this angle in here. This angle in here is known as the conversion angle because it converts us from a great circle to a rum line. And the conversion angle is equal to 0 0.5 the convergency. So if we know the great circle track we can work out the rum line and vice versa if we know the convergency and the conversion angle. The conversion angle is always 0 0.5 times the convergency but convergency the example we saw um, our equation for sine lat times change of long equals the convergency isn't always true. It depends on what type of chart we're using. But for now, think of this as sine latitude times the change in longitude and conversion angle is 0 0.5. Conversion angle always being half of the convergency, always. So let's take a look at another example. An aircraft follows a great circle track from A to B what is the great circle track on departure from A? So let's draw the effing picture. Great circle track from A to B. What is the great circle track on departure from A? Point A is west 50, point B is east 10. So A is gonna be over here at uh, south 45, west 50 degrees. And this is on the same latitude south 45 and it's east 10. If these were different latitudes and sort of angled like this, to find the convergency you would take the average of the two. But 
This is not the case for this one. But we are gonna cross over the equator about here. So we have South Pole is gonna be down here, North going up in two directions like this. And we know that we're looking for the great circle, which is the straight line between the two. And yeah, that's all the information we have. And it initially looks like we don't have enough information to find out the great circle track in here. This is what we're looking for. But we do because we know that if we follow a line of latitude, that's a run line. So we can draw on our run line roughly like that. And we know that if we're following a line of latitude, it's going to be either 90 degrees or 270 degrees. In this case, we're going from point A, which is west, to the east. So it's going to be 90 degrees. This angle in here is going to be 90 degrees between this run line. And then we can find out the conversion angle in here, add that onto our great circle, uh, sorry, add that onto our run line to find the value for the great circle. So let's pop in our equation. Sine lat times the change in longitude is the convergency. So sine 45 multiplied by the change in longitude from west 50 to east 10. We're passing through the equator, uh, sorry, the Greenwich Meridian. So we've got to add them two together. So it's 60 degree change. And sine 45 times 60, sine 45 is about 70%. So we'll say that convergency is 42 degrees. And our conversion angle, which is our difference between the run line and the great circle, is gonna be half of that, 21 degrees. Okay, and then if we look at the picture, we can clearly see that the great circle is gonna be bigger than the run line. So our value for x, our great circle track, is going to be 90 plus the 21, or 111 degrees. In summary then, great circle tracks are constantly changing because we're constantly referencing everything to north, and as we move, the relative position of north to us changes like this. The, at the poles, the convergency is equal to the change in longitude you can see that the convergency of these lines means that we get an angle in here, which is equal to the change in longitude. And then we add that onto our original uh, track, and that would give us our new track for that great circle at this second point. So convergency at the poles is the change in longitude, but then at the equator, the lines are perfectly parallel, so there is no convergency. And we use the sine function because that starts at zero at zero degrees and goes up to one at 90 degrees to give us a uh, equation for the convergency, which is convergency is the sine of the latitude times the change in longitude. And convergency is very useful for getting the conversion angle, which is the difference between the run line and the great circle and it is 0.5 times the convergency here. Some other points about the great circle and run line. The run line follows a constant track from point A to point B, and the great circle track is constantly changing. The only point that these two values for track will be the same is at the mid longitude between two points. So you can say that the average track of the great circle is equal to the run line track. And as we stated before, the difference between the two will be the conversion angle.